Yo, what's up guys, Complies here. So today I'm gonna be talking about a few things that we can do in game and also some different window settings that we can change to help make our game look better, look more vibrant, more colorful, and also help you see enemies better. But before we get into the video, you guys know I have to do this. So if you guys like this video and if you guys like my channel, if I bring you any value at all, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. As of right now, only about 11% of people who watch my videos are subscribed. So if we can bump that number up, that would be amazing. Also remember to hit that notification bell as I upload weekly. I do tips and tricks, montages, you name it, we do it all. I have the links to my other social medias in the description below. Twitter is definitely the really easiest way to get a hold of me. Or if you guys have questions or need help with anything, feel free to join the Discord. And most importantly, don't forget to follow me on Twitch. Now, when this video goes up, probably a couple hours later, I'll be playing some Apex. So stop by, say hi. Anyways, guys, that's it. Let's get right into the video. All right, guys. So the first thing we're going to want to do is go into our settings. And then the first option that we're going to be enabling is the colorblind mode. So scroll down a little bit and you'll go to accessibility and colorblind mode. Now, I recommend playing on Tritonopia because I feel like it brightens up the colors. It makes everything a little bit more vibrant. So real quick, I'm going to show you what it looks like with and without so this is what it looks like without colorblind mode this is just the normal settings normal colors and this is what it looks like with colorblind on so see how the colors pop a little bit more everything's a little bit brighter it's not too big of a difference but i like using it just because i like my game to look nice so yeah this one's sort of personal preference but if you guys want to enable it make your game look a little brighter that's what you want to do now we're going to be moving on to the video settings and i'll walk you guys through that real quick now the first one we're going to be going over is the brightness now i'd recommend playing on anywhere from 65 to about 80 i wouldn't cap it over 80 because once you start getting around that mark everything starts to get sort of washed out and the colors start to look kind of dull and everything just gets really bright and white and i found that 80 is sort of like the cap for brightness that you want to go to now real quick i'm going to show you guys what it looks like when you're playing on the default 50 versus 80 so this is what it looks like when you're playing on the default 50 brightness i mean the colors are good but the shadows are really dark there's some really dark areas around the map which could potentially lead you to not seeing someone as well as you could if you had your brightness cranked up a little bit now we're going to go back and i'll show you what it looks like with the 80 brightness you don't have have those super dark areas i mean the shadows are obviously still there but they're not as dark as they were now you don't have to play on 80 i played on 70 for the longest time and i just recently turned it up to 80 it's going to be hard for some people to adjust so i'd recommend starting out lower and sort of working your way up to anywhere from the 70 to 80 mark but definitely if you're playing on like 60 or below you're going to want to bump that up to at least 60 65 so now we're going to go on to the next settings so we're going to go back into our settings menu and then we're going to go down a little bit to the advanced tab now I know a lot of people, they like to have high graphics. They want their game to look nice, but enabling these settings anywhere from like medium to high is going to cause more clutter on your screen. It's going to make it harder for you to see things. So I'm going to go through a few settings that you can keep on, but for now, we're going to turn everything to the lowest, just disable absolutely everything. And then I'll walk you guys through what you can turn on if you want your game to look good without it being too visually cluttering and making it hard to see enemies. So the first thing that we can enable is anti-aliasing. So what this does is that it sort of smooths the edges so it doesn't look as jagged and you don't get those weird moving lines personally i like those lines i like everything to be a little jagged because it makes it look a little bit more clear to me personally anti-aliasing makes the game look kind of blurry and kind of muddy for me but if you don't want those jagged lines you want everything to be very smooth and silky this is a setting that you can turn on now the next thing we're going to be going to is streaming budget and if you want the absolute highest fps possible keep it to none but it doesn't have too big of an impact on your fps but it does make your game look a lot nicer when you crank it up to at least low you could even get away with running this on insane if you have a decent pc and it won't affect your frames too much so now i'll show you guys what it looks like when you have this cranked up to insane it's gonna fill in these textures and you'll notice that most in your guns and in your hand and on your character model it's not blurry and it's not muddy like it once was just a second ago when we had them set to none i personally run mine on medium or high i don't know i just kind of switch it up depending on the day but you guys can do whatever you want experiment with it find out what looks best for you it won't affect your fps too much but it's going to give you a lot better textures make your game look a lot better while also not being like too visually cluttering or, or taking away too much from seeing enemies or fps or anything like that all right guys so now we're going to go back into our setting and i'll show you a couple more things real quick now we're going to scroll all the way down and go to model effects and impact marks now you're going to want to set model and effects details to low and impact marks to disabled now in my auto exec file that i'll leave in the description below it'll show you how to set the model detail even lower which removes a ton of unnecessary clutter from the screen and it doesn't fully render certain objects in the game so you can see a little bit more as for effect details you want to leave this low because when you crank this up things like thermites grenades certain explosions like bang old or caustic old the graphics on those are going to be enhanced and a lot more vibrant so it's going to be a lot harder to see through those and there's going to be a lot going on on screen so setting this to low will help you clear a lot of that up as for impact marks there's no reason to have those on just to say with those all it does is put bolt holes in walls and stuff like that so there's really no need to have that on so that's it for end game now we're going to hop out of game and i'll show you a couple of other tweaks that you can do to help enhance the color of your game so the first change we're going to do is called digital vibrance and we're going to be enabling that through the nvidia control panel so all of my nvidia users this part is for you as for amd users i'll have something for you right after this so stick around so all we have to do to get into our nvidia control panel is right click click on nvidia control panel 
wait for it to load. Then you go into your display settings and then you go to adjust desktop color settings. Go down a little bit and you'll find the digital vibrance setting. Now by default, this is set to 50. I usually have mine on 80, which I know is pretty high. A lot of people play even higher than that, honestly, but I'd recommend setting it anywhere from 65 to about 80. Just like the same with the brightness, I'd really recommend you guys trying this to 65, seeing how you like it, and then eventually like working your way up if you think the colors are still kind of bland and washed out. But yeah, I play on 80. You guys can try it out if you want. All you have to do, hit apply, and it'll do it only for this desktop. If you have two monitors, you'll have to go up here to switch between monitors. I personally have it on 70 for my other monitors since I don't play on that, but the colors are pretty similar. But if you guys don't want the desktop to to be colored too you just want that to have the normal colors you don't want it to be too saturated there is a program called vibrance gui i'm going to be leaving a link to that down in the description and real quick i'm going to show you guys how we download it set that up now this is also the thing that amd users can do as well because i'm not too sure if the amd drivers have an option to enhance the colors and make it more vibrant i don't have an amd card so i don't really know how to test that or how to look for it so once you get into your browser you go to vibrancegui.com i'll leave a link to it in the description below all you do hit download desktop for pc it's going to download now you guys will need WinRAR for this, or maybe not. You might be able to just use the regular WinZip, but I'd recommend getting WinRAR anyway. But yeah, just open up this zip file, minimize that, drag this to your desktop or wherever you want to keep it. Doesn't matter. You want to double click it to open it. And this is what you can do. Like I said, default is set to 50. I like to have mine on 80. And then there's a couple settings that you want to tick. You want to have effect primary monitor only and never change the resolutions ticked. So we're going to head and click both of those. So now what we need to do, we need to add Apex so that when Apex is open, Vibrance can recognize that it's open and only change change the color of that application. So the easiest way to do this is start up Apex. I'm going to go ahead and start this up. Now you don't really need to do anything in game. You just need to make sure you have that application running just so that Vibrance can recognize it and automatically import it into the programs. So now all you have to do is hit add. And right here, we're going to look for the process called R5 Apex and that'll be right here. Double click that. You want to make sure that you don't check this. You don't want to check this at all. And this is where you change your in-game Vibrance level. Now, like I said before, I'd recommend anywhere from 65 to 80. I'm just going to go ahead and set mine to 80 right now. Hit save and that's all you do. So now every time you boot up Apex, it's only going to add the Vibrance when you're in the game. It's not going to affect your desktop or anything else like that. It's not going to affect your other monitor. Like Now, another thing that you guys can do, if you have an NVIDIA card, I'm not sure if AMD has this. If you don't want to mess with Vibrance and you only want to go through your NVIDIA settings, what we're going to do is we're going to go back into Apex real quick. We're going to go into our NVIDIA Shadow Play menu. We're going to go into Game Filters. Go to your style. You want to click one, click Add Filter. And what you can do here is go to Color, click on the Color menu, this setting right here, Vibrance. You can crank that up as well. Find your sweet spot, whatever you want. You know, mess around with these settings. I don't have these settings enabled. I don't use them. I'm just showing you guys that it's another option that you can do. So I don't necessarily have the best settings. Don't copy these. Just kind of mess around and figure out what works for you. But yeah, that's another method that you can do. Guys, and for this last setting, you're not going to be able to see it. It's going to be completely monitor dependent. So it's going to vary a little bit from person to person, but you're going to have to change around a couple of monitor settings. Now I know each monitor represents color a little bit different. It shows things a little different, but I'm going to show you guys my settings. And it's just the last thing we can do to make your game a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more bright, pop a little bit more. So all you want to do is go into your monitor settings and the things you're going to want to change are your brightness, your contrast, and your saturation. Now, like I said, I'm not showing this because you guys probably all have different kinds of monitors. No one's going to have the same thing. Each manufacturer has a different menu, but each manufacturer should have these same settings that you can change. So I'm just going to walk you through the general ones that you can do. Now, the first one is going to be brightness. Personally, I have mine on my monitor cranked to 100. And I know you guys think I'm probably playing on really bright settings, but that really helps me with the shadows and picking out enemies in dark spots. So I'm not really missing a ton of stuff when I'm going into dark places or checking dark corners or things like that. And the next setting is going to be saturation. I have mine cranked to 80, which I think default on most monitors is about 50 or so. I'm not sure. Like I said, each monitor varies. Now the last thing we're going to be doing is contrast. I didn't bump mine up too much. I bumped it up to 60, which is 10 above the default of 50. And all this does is make it so my colors don't look as washed out as they did before. Kind of sharpens the darks a little bit, I'd say, and gives it a nice contrast. I know that's not really the best explanation, but try it out for yourself, guys, just so you see what I'm talking about. Now that's it for this video. Like I said earlier, I will be leaving links to my auto exec and the video config in the description below. I'll leave it for stretch res and I'll also do it for native res for you guys who don't play stretch res, just so you don't have to go in and change stuff yourself. I think these settings are pretty good for seeing people. It makes your game look a lot more colorful, a lot more vibrant, things pop more, you know? And I don't know, I just feel like it makes the game look more alive for me, which in return just kind of makes the game more fun to play. No one wants to play a really bland, dull looking game. But I don't know, that's just my opinion. Everyone's a little bit different.
But yeah, if this video helped you guys, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, don't forget to check out my social medias in the description below. We're nearing 7k subs, which we're hitting it so fast. We're gaining a lot each day. I know I say it a lot, but thank you guys so much. And also before I end this video, be sure to follow my Twitch in the description below. Now, probably a couple hours after this video goes live, I'll be playing some Apex. So yeah, come by, hang out, say hi, come chat with me. You know, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. You can join the Discord in the description below as well if you have any questions. But yeah, guys, that's it for me. I hope this video helped you, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Peace.